I want to start off by talking very, uh, at a very simple level about a secure payment transaction. And a secure payment transaction has a customer verification of some form. There's some form of physical or virtual merchant terminal. There's data exchange, there's servers involved, and then of course there's authorization and settlement. All very basic stuff, I'm sure. It's not news to anybody in the room. So if this is the basic outline of a secure payment transaction, the two blue circles is where EMV code traditionally sat. If you are aware of EMV Co at all, you think of the EMV chip, you think of that chip being used in, a, in an EMV capable terminal. And for many years, that was EMV Co's world. Uh, EMV Co was formed in 1998, and in the same way that the uh, chip technology originated in Europe, initially our focus was very European as well. But as we all know, uh, chip, chip on cards, chip terminals, and now a mainstream part of our payments life. And it's something that we're very happy about at EMV Co. We've, uh, we track these numbers. Um, I know there's at least one statistician in the room because he said hello on the way in. Um, these numbers, in fact, probably look low, uh, particularly the US numbers. Uh, EMV Co gathers its data from uh, six global payment systems. We gather it on a rolling 12 months. Uh, you will find that uh, regions like the U.S. that are in the, still in the process of migration, their updated monthly numbers that you get from the card payment systems are going to show, show even higher volumes than this. Um, so great. So EMV chip is uh, established, which is fantastic news. Again, n won't be a surprise to anyone in the room. Fraudsters don't go away. The fraud moved online. And EMV Co. moved online as well. So we're no longer just an organization that's focused on EMV chip. That's still a very core and important part of the work that we do. But if you think of this very simple outline of the payment transaction environment, our specifications underlie many components of this space. Contact chip, contactless chip, Payment tokenization, which is applicable both in the contact, contactless and in the online world. 3D secure, which is a significant long presentation in its own right. Um, account activation user interface requirements for phones. We do QR code specifications. We're a global body. This is a very important piece of work, uh, particularly in Asia. Uh, we do software-based mobile payment security requirements. Uh, we do underlying requirements around card huddle device CVM. And of course, uh, secure mode commerce is the one that's under development right now. So putting that work in context, we like to talk about EMV Co as being a body that's focused on delivering a technology toolbox. And we use that terminology very deliberately we want to provide options. We want to provide choices to secure payments, card-based payments, in multiple environments. And we want those payments to be able to be globally interoperable. And that's because when you look at our core mission, Ian Vico's core mission, that's what we want to do. We want to facilitate worldwide interoperability, secure payment transactions. And yes, we want to fight fraud, but I think most of you know it's very, very possible to have secure closed loop systems, and that's not what we're about. We want our specifications to be the baseline for secure open systems. And the one additional point that I really want to make on this slide is EMV Co is somewhat unique in that all of our specifications are made available on a royalty-free basis. There was a time many years ago when that made us very unique, but other organizations have started to do this as well. But it's always been our premise that EMV specifications in any field, including secure remote commerce, should always be freely available so that the entire industry has the opportunity to produce interoperable solutions regardless 
of the, whether it's a virtual or face-to-face -face environment. This is more of a sales pitch slide. I'll leave it in there for the recording, but I think I've actually made all of the points on this slide or, already. So that's an overview of EMVCO and what we do, the sort of specifications development work that we're responsible for. What I'd like to highlight at this point is who we are not. What are the things that we don't do? And this became very important, um, particularly as EMVCO expanded its scope, as chip became uh, more widespread, and in particular as chip rolled out across the US, there was confusion because EMVCO's ownership, we're owned by the six global payment systems. And we're owned that way because these payment systems have a responsibility to deliver on a global brand promise. However, our ownership does not mean that we get involved in business issues. We're not responsible for final products. We don't build chips, we don't build cards, we don't build terminals. We're also not responsible for mandates or compliance. So if anyone in the industry has said to you, well, you have to do this because EMVCO says so, that's not true. Going back to the point I made a minute ago, EMVCO's role in the industry is to produce an interoperable toolbox. Every country, every region, sometimes individual issuers, individual acquirers, they're choosing different elements from that toolbox. Um, you know, for example, when I go home to Australia, I tap and pay for everything. There's no cardholder verification method. If I'm using a card, there's certainly no PIN. I mean, that's what works for face-to-face -face payments in Australia. Every market figures out what they're going to pull from the EMV toolbox to deploy it to meet their own needs. We're certainly not responsible for commercial incentives. We never talk about interchange. Um, EMVCO, we have a very strict antitrust -poli anti policy of our own that we adhere to. So we would never get involved in pricing for chip transactions or pricing for a 3DS transaction or any other sort of transaction. And finally, EMVCO is never involved in any discussions around liability shifts. So if there's a payment system decision on one type of environment versus another, that's being decided outside of EMVCO. Which leads me into this next slide. Uh, we believe the work that we do is critically important to the payments industry, but we're also well aware that we're only one piece. Um, it's actually, I speak on behalf of EMVCO frequently and I talk to a lot of people. It's sometimes quite flattering the amount of influence that uh, people think EMVCO has. Um, we fit within a much broader ecosystem that produces secure and interoperable payments. Um, it, what I wanted to highlight here is we often build our work on standards and then we coordinate with other bodies who are at a more detailed specification level. You know, FIDO's focus is on biometric authentication. W3C has a very broad focus, but on the web space, they're looking at all web payments. We're partnering with these bodies. We're providing the input which says, great, you have a much broader remit, but let's talk to you about what the requirements could be for secure card-based payments in your space. So, as I mentioned earlier, the owners of EMVCO are American Express, Discover, JCB, MasterCard, Union Pay, and Visa. I guess I didn't mention that earlier. Really, I said global brands. Now I'm listing them. But they're only one part of EMVCO. EMVCO relies very heavily on what we refer to as our associates program. And I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. We uh, have a subscriber community. Several of you in the room are part of our su subscriber community. And on the previous side, you saw a lot of other organizations, many of whom we have uh, established liaisons with. Our engagement includes speaking engagements like this one. Uh, we often participate on many panels. 
We have a wealth of material on our website, and, other, and often we contribute to the web, webcasts, webinars of other organizations as well. Uh, we do extensive work. Uh, we have many white papers available. We do best practices. We have a very, very active engagement model, and the output of the EMV specifications are driven by this model. So, um, before I hand over to Clinton, I just want to close with a couple of comments. Some of you in the room are already associates of EMV Co. Some of you are subscribers, great. Um, if you have an interest in the work that we're doing, and I've just given you a very high-level flavor of the areas that we're involved in, we would encourage you to think about being more actively engaged with us. We want as much input as we can get from the industry, and we're happy to provide multiple avenues to make that happen. I have mentioned a couple of times our associates program, and one of the things I really like about this slide is I've been involved with the Ambico work for many years. Um, there was a time at which all of the uh, associates, and these are, I'll get into the list in a minute, but these are important players in the payments ecosystem. There was a time when it was very heavily European. That's where CHIP was founded, and that's where the engagement came from. As you can see now, uh, we have an excellent global footprint. Could be better a couple of blank spaces, and you know, we would like to work on that. But we have a global footprint, we have a global engagement, we're very pleased with that. So I'm just going to pause for a second and talk a little bit about the different ways that companies engage with the Invico. At the higher level of engagement, the associate level, we have business associates. And these companies join us in our strategic discussions. They help provide us guidance on what should we be looking at? Where should we go next? What's the next area that's really at the point where global interoperability and specifications are needed? I think you all know the payment space is evolving. I've been in the space 30 years. It's evolved more in the last five than it had in the 25 years preceding. So this is a very important and constant question for EMVCO. What new payments-related technology is at the point of maturity where there's a need for global standardization? So these companies sit on our board of advisors. They provide us direction because they're our business associates. We have another category of company, and they're more engaged with this on the technical side. If our business advisors give us direction on where we should go, technical associates give us a lot of input on how we should get there. We'll come up with draft specifications, we'll review them with our technical associates, they'll provide us input. A lot of vendors will say to us, yeah, the spec sounds nice, but we couldn't possibly implement it. You know, you need to make some changes. And that's exactly the sort of input we want to hear. And then there are some Companies, again, some big names and some very important names around the world who participate in both levels. They send their business folks to our strategic direction meetings. They come to our board of advisors. Then they send their programmers and their engineers to our technical associate meetings. So if your company's not on this list and you're not already an EMV Co subscriber, which is another way to engage with us, but not as quite a high and active and engagement level, um, I encourage you to look into it. I encourage you to, to think about, well, this stuff is important to me, it's important to my company. Um, we would welcome more participation. All right, just a little heads up on material. Today, of course, uh, the rest of the day, we're gonna be focused on secure remote commerce. Uh, as you saw earlier, there's a lot of areas that we're involved in, and we're constantly working on the specs. And just because they're published, we're immediately working on the next upgrade, the next revision, the next set of changes needed. So all of the areas I mentioned are under constant evaluation. If any or all of them are important to you or your company, there's a lot of resource for you to look into, a lot of freely available information on our website. So I'm going to pause now, um, as
promised, um, I'm happy to take any high-level questions about Iambico, who we are, what we do, before I hand it over to Clinton to dive into the guts of secure remote commerce. So, anything at all, any general questions? Is there a question back there? Are you waving away flies? Are there flies in the back of the room? <laughs> and take me back to my Australia days. All right, great, thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to hand it over to Clinton.